Today we're watching one of the worst videos I've seen in a long time. That's really it. This video is called I Tried Seven Ways to Get TikTok Famous. We already know that TikTok is a dumpster fire. You don't need me to sit here and explain that to you guys. So let's just jump in. Everyone can get famous on TikTok, so I'm wondering why can't I? I'm peeing right now and it's getting in my shoes. Does it feel like you're always wearing a face that maybe isn't yours? Yeah. We almost died. I'm going on a journey to see what it takes to make it on TikTok and if I have the chops. Los Angeles, home of the rich and famous and me. Hey, do you want to answer some questions about TikTok? Nope. I feel like I'm just becoming an old man. Whenever I see somebody running around with a microphone asking for street interviews, I just get irrationally mad. You think I have time for that? I have places to be. So, uh, what do you think about TikTok? Like, what a loaded question. It's Tuesday at 11 a.m. I just got my coffee, absolutely. And you're asking me how I feel about TikTok. This is not going to go over well. <laughs> Do you want to talk to me about TikTok? Sadly, I'm neither, which is not how I expected things to go when I moved here five years ago. Why won't anyone talk to me about TikTok? But back then, TikTok didn't exist, and it seems like it's the easiest way to get famous these days. I think it's just because my soul is tired. I'm worn out. I, I, I don't like the current state of social media. It, it sucks. <laughs> like, that's just the way it is. It's time for me to jump on the bandwagon before it's too late. If Gen Z teens can become stars on TikTok, why can't I? TikTok that, that's what you do, baby. So I definitely don't represent what you know, your standard TikToker is like. I'm not 17, I'm, I don't really have the TikTok look. Are we looking at the same guy? This man would be invited to every TikTok influencer house under the sun. He's just got to get his clout up, you know what I mean? So I hit up Michael Wiest of Juice Crate Media, a social media manager with his own agency. He's an industry vet who's seen just how cutthroat the business can be. So I wanted to learn how to reinvent myself as a TikToker and see if he might take me as a client. People make it look so easy to be on TikTok, but is it that easy? I do not think so. Everyone thinks it's so easy, you can go viral. No, it's like a constant amount of work. I think both of those statements can be true. It is brain dead easy to go viral on TikTok. That's a fact. The reason why it's a lot of work is because you're constantly trying to compete for attention, but anything's a lot of work. I mean, welcome to the real world. <laughs> you ha literally have like two seconds, the time it takes you to do like this to get someone's attention. So if it's, they're doing that and it doesn't engage, they're gonna just do that again and swipe up and then it's gone. That's like the most important part. Whether that attention is, is vanity because you're good looking or a prank video and it's shocking, all you have to do is gain attention. Then, you know, the future's yours. Michael was super helpful. It's kind of crazy to think you can just get famous on social media and that like a manager like me would take you on as a client. It's laughable because that's, it's funny, like, no. I wonder what value this man is able to provide for the people that he manages. Like, what do I get with your expertise? Are you making the TikToks for me? <laughs> and his words of encouragement had me excited to start TikToking. I was determined to wow my way onto his talent roster, so I went home to plan my first video. So there's this one called the Pee Your Pants Challenge. It racked up 3.9 million views on TikTok. What are we doing? <laughs> what the fuck are we doing? Collectively, I mean, I mean the people of this world. What are we doing? I'm peeing right now, and it's getting in my shoes. I should have brought an extra change of socks. Billy Madison was doing this 20 years ago. Turns out the Peer Pants Challenge didn't make a splash. I'd have to crank it up a notch. Vice really had a man pee his pants in the middle of the street and he didn't even go viral. <laughs> All you have to do is gain attention. If it's something shocking, obviously you're gonna keep watching. How to eat a high protein breakfast if you don't have time to cook. Here we go, a fucking caveman now. <laughs> Six raw eggs and a raw beef brain. So I reached out to William Breesh, a fitness enthusiast whose macho and controversial takes on health and nutrition have gotten him press, as well as an ongoing TikTok suspension. Surely he would know how to turn hate into views. A carnivore diet is, is an animal-based diet. On a daily basis, I have uh, lamb liver, 
beef kidney, beef brains, testicles, could be lamb, could be uh, veal, could be anything. Test, trend, D-ball, can't forget about those. That's why I never understand, like these guys who are all into eating raw meat for the health benefits, the nutrients, yet you're just pumping your body full of steroids. It's like, you don't really care about health, you just want attention. Sorry. Do we all like, fuck vegans? No, 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 no. You show vegans sympathy, because you feel bad for them. I do use the word soy boy a lot, and it pisses the fuck out of me. Oh, I love to trigger the vegans, the soy boys. Nothing gets my dick harder than just triggering people. Okay, let's get some hate. Hey, TikTok, I'm Zach Shucklin. To prove that I'm not a soy boy, I'm about to eat a bull nut. Fucking brilliant. You like that? That is fucking brilliant. I love this. Now you got the soy boys hurt. So I'm about to eat some raw piss grapes. There you go. I'm not a soy boy. You are not a fucking soy boy. <laughs> it has to be bizarre. It has to get a reaction. You gotta tell people who the fuck you are. Weem introduced me to a world of new and exciting foods, but the idea of pissing people off for a living had my stomach in knots. Unless you're literally clearing over $2 million a month in revenue like Liver King, you have no business eating raw meat on the internet for attention. Anyone else just so tired of all of this? It seems as if even when I take a break from this digital world, I'm still exhausted. Which is why today's video is sponsored by Helix. Helix Sleep makes premium mattresses and bedding customized to fit your needs conveniently shipped in a box right to your doorstep. Everybody's different and Helix knows that. That's why they designed a sleep quiz that helps match your unique body type to your sleeping preferences. And if you happen to sleep with a partner or even a pet, you can take the quiz together and find the best compromise for all of you. I prefer a nice medium mattress feel, not too firm, not too soft, and I tend to sleep on my side and stomach, which is why I was matched with the king size midnight luck. I've been sleeping on Helix mattresses for well over a year and a half now, and ever since I moved, I had to upgrade from a queen to a king. That's how much I love my Helix mattress. I'm able to start counting sheep in a matter of minutes, and every morning I wake up feeling really rejuvenated. And the best part about Helix is that your new mattress comes to you. Gone are the days of going to some mattress store and having to listen to a sales pitch for an overpriced, uncomfortable new bed. I even had some fun setting up my new Helix mattress. It took me just under five minutes to carry it up the stairs and watch my new mattress spring to life. If it makes you nervous to buy something that you haven't tried in person yet, Helix Sleep offers a 100 night sleep trial. This gives you a little bit over three months to completely fall in love with your new mattress. And if you don't, they will come and pick it up for you, no questions asked and you will get a full refund. Every Helix mattress comes with a 10-year warranty, and they even offer flexible payment plans and financing options. So a great night's sleep is never that far away. I love my Helix, and I think you would too. If you're in the need for a new bed, check out Helix. Go to helixsleep.com slash filion to get up to $200 off your new mattress, plus two free pillows. And thank you to Helix for sponsoring this video. I didn't want to be hated. I wanted to be desired. And in the TikTok world, nobody is more desired than the lucky few of LA's content houses. So I reached out to the Breezy Boys, a crew of six shirtless guys who all live together and churn out TikTok content 24 seven. Were they sexy? Were they cringy? I really couldn't tell. Yes and yes. <laughs> but with over 15 million total followers, Clearly they were doing something right, and I wanted in. Even though the Breezy Boys only formed in 2021. I've known these guys since I was like a kid, it seems like, you know what I'm saying? So was like, that last year? These boys are family, and they each brought something different to the table. My brain hurts because they all look like fucking clones. How am I supposed to tell the difference between Breezy 1 and Breezy 6? I like to do a lot of gym content, I like to work out a lot. I'm like an anime guy, like, Kind of like dark vibe, like positive, like funny. They're even talking about themselves like they're a character in a video game. What's my vibe? Am I Doomer Phil? While I was still exploring what my TikTok style might be, they seemed to have me already figured out. I see him as kind of like a, uh, you know, one of those funny guys yeah, that does was like the words it. on the screen yes. or something or like, like that. Like like sarcastic reactions. Sarc yeah, yeah reactions, reactions type. Yeah. Why does it seem like on TikTok you fulfill one specific role, a niche within a niche? You are not allowed to deviate. Oh yes, I'm Doomer Phil, a dark magician who rates aquariums. I wasn't quite sure what they were talking about, so we called a content meeting to strategize and brainstorm. It seemed like all people wanted to see these days was boys getting wet. 
the trend is you get in the shower with clothes on. And the person in the chair by the, like that's being hung over by the pool has to finish the lyric. We'll just get in the shower and like literally shower with clothes on. And if you get it right, you get pulled back in. If you get it wrong, you get pushed in the pool. I'm still struggling to find the point of being famous on TikTok if you're not going to pivot to another platform. Default white guys with curly brown hair and dangly earrings are a dime a dozen. You're farming all of these impressions, yet you can't even turn it into actual money, and you all live in like this glorified dorm room compound. And best of all, everybody forgets about you in under 12 months. So like, what are we doing here? Someone scrolls and they see someone in a shower with clothes on, it's like... Yeah. What's good? All of us getting in the shower and with our clothes on, like being stupid as hell, mm -hmm. that's gonna yeah. get views. That's mm -hmm. gonna, it's, it, it would, how would it not? For us, what we've tried to consider is to do a lot more personality videos so people can connect with us and build right. a stronger connection with us. And that's what we've tried to implement as a group. We can't really make a brand out of just being like flirty. Like you have to actually create something of like yourself. With substance, yeah. Yeah, substance. And like throwing a friend in a pool. Yes, exactly. exactly. Well, I was getting wet in my own way. It's getting in my shoes. I didn't think my content so far was meshing with the breezy vibe. I clearly had my work cut out for me. We have a biofitness later today. <laughs> They have a literal whiteboard with their daily tasks, their quests to get done for the day. As if they're making groundbreaking content. <laughs> like, wh what are we doing? Three, three to four, we'll do content. Content. <laughs> you don't make content! We're gonna give you a makeover. We're gonna turn you into a breezy boy. This is the highlight of the breezy boy. We wake day. up every single day just to do this. How often do you work out? Like, do you work out often? All like run, I'll take like a class. That's there. I'm, I, oh yeah. yeah. I'm a little blown away. A little blown away. When you're lifting, to be honest, you're not really thinking about anything besides like that moment in time. And I feel like that's a big part of like our lives because we're always thinking about the future, the past, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> It's so fucking bad. I can't believe a million dollar company sent a guy out here to film this. Like on social media, you're trying, that's how you get followers. You have to impress. So like, it's really stressful dealing with that all day. Like, how do I make everyone like me? We went back to the mansion to sweat some more by learning a viral dance together in their manager's closet. I might mess it up. No, it's okay. That, that's fine. We do, we do this. Yeah, it takes so long. Yeah. yeah. What advice do you have for me to really make it on social media? Quit. Leave. Stop. You don't have to be here. <laughs> it could take a day or it could take a year. But if you really believe in yourself and you're dedicated, it's only a matter of time. If you are consistent and you are having fun with it, at the end of the day, it's going to be like a snowball effect and it's going to pile up and you just got to be consistent with whatever you do. And then you're going to crash and burn because nobody knows who you are. You're literally a boy band, a homogenous unit. You are nothing by yourself. This is the problem with TikTok. And it's kind of sad because these kids get this false sense of inflated ego. Like, oh, we got millions of followers, yet it doesn't mean anything. At least boy bands back in the day were making music. But could I impress Michael as a solo act? Would I still shine without my posse behind me? So I reached out to Sebastian Bales. Ah! an OG influencer whose pranks have gotten him over 12 million followers on TikTok. He's also controversial. His stunts tend to push the envelope and they've even gotten him canceled in the past. Is this what you want? Cause I'm not orange. Still, he's as big as it gets. So I set off to Palm Springs to see if life alone at the top was all it was cracked up to be. A fun exercise I like to do is ask yourself, honestly, would you trade your life with these famous people? No, why not? The fact that being famous is like peddled and glorified is laughable. There are no upsides. <laughs> this is like my get ready room slash filming room. This is where all the magic happens. This is where I get ready. This is where I do my hair, my makeup, my outfits. I love fashion. I also love being loud and colorful. What gets people's attention is colors. So if you have colorful hair, colorful outfits, it works. See, I feel so naive jumping into okay. this because I would never even consider things like that. I feel like I think differently. Like when I see something crazy go on, most people are like, that's so sad. I can't believe that car crash happened. I'm like, oh my gosh, that'd be such a good video. This man has like the sociopathic David Dobrik mindset. To get 12 million followers, I feel like you have to just carve out a piece of your soul for the content demon. What TikTok are we going to be making a video for today? So we have a morph suit right there mm -hmm. and we are basically going to be scaring people dressing up as mannequins 
and we're gonna actually scare people in real life. Let's do we'll it. Let's do it on the spot. I'll be your muse. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. There's so many steps and it takes mm -hmm. forever. I'm having a blast. I'm glad, because I usually don't have a blast. I'm usually miserable doing this. You're usually miserable? Sometimes I just wish I didn't have to like wear so much or have to put a face on or something. <laughs> so stop. <laughs> yeah, I actually just hate my life. Every waking moment, I wish I was doing something else. As he's putting makeup on, oh, it's just so dark. All of this just is. Does it feel like you're always wearing a face that maybe isn't yours? Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate the honesty. Like, uh, some people might think I overuse the word dystopia. How else are you going to describe this? This man is putting on makeup as he's self-proclaiming that he hates his job and what he does. I don't like acting like somebody who I'm not, yet I'm pigeonholed into doing this because, hey, it makes bread. Or at least I hope it does. I've had, like, identity issues, and I'm like, who am I? I don't even know. But this is how I am normally. Um, and a lot of people are usually shocked to see me so, like, I guess normal in a way because mm -hmm. people don't think I'm normal people think I'm like mentally unstable you know I do be thinking sometimes what if these platforms did like an anonymous happiness survey or questionnaire because you have all these kindergartners and young impressionable people that want to grow up to be influencers or youtubers or tiktokers yet none of these people are happy so what's going on here while I was nearly blind in the morph suit people's reactions seemed to range from amused to annoyed <laughs> I was kind of worried I'd get punched in the face or give someone a heart attack, but I was more nervous that people were going to think this was really stupid. You want pranks? Okay, I got an idea. Just go up to a server and be like, what the fuck is this? What is this? Or like get mad. And get really mad, get the reaction. Be like, it's so good. Yeah, it's a sick idea. Let's just harass service workers. <laughs> I'm telling you, one day a TikTok influencer is going to piss off the wrong disgruntled service industry worker just trying to scrape by working for tips. It's not going to end well. <laughs> Do you think it's more important to be authentic online or to be a character? I think it's definitely important to be authentic. And that is kind of contradicting as far as what we did today. But our ultimate goal was being viral. So, I mean, if your goal is to be authentic and viral, then that's going to be a lot longer process. That's not going to be an overnight success. It's kind of a pickle, right? Because mm -hmm. on one hand, you don't want to get hate. But on the other hand, sometimes the hate is what pays the bills. Yeah. That has to factor into your private life as well though, right? Personally, I think you should play a character forever. Never admit to your audience when you're being your true, genuine self. This way you can offload any sort of accountability forever. There's no downside. I mean, people do it all the time. You just have to know who they are. Oh, absolutely. Um, I've had a scandal before where I got death threats. I was so scared to leave my house. I was scared that someone was gonna like find my address and like, I don't know, attack me, kill me. Like the comments were so bad. There was about a half a million comments about basically me just deserving to die. There's a lot of mental pressure. There's bodily harm. Is it worth it? Uh, I definitely, yes. Are you kidding me? What am I gonna do, work a regular job? This influencer shit slaps. No, but for real though, I think I'm getting numb to the fact that the internet moves so fast that nothing really truly matters, which is depressing. If you're on the internet long enough, you'll know what I mean. Sebastian had all the luxuries of a social media star, but his life in Palm Springs felt lonely, almost like an exile. The internet can be a toxic place, and I began to grapple with whether fame was even worth it. But before worrying about that, I'd have to get famous. So I met up with Michael one last time to see if he'd agree to represent me. Well, I really appreciate you meeting with me today. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to hear about everything that you've done over the last week or so. Yo, this can't be comfortable. It looks like Bob the Builder just dropped his toolbox on this guy's neck. He's got 50 cal bullets, a bike lock, a Chanel necklace, a skull and crossbones, and barbed wire. I respect the dedication to the drip. I really do. I just want to know if you can breathe okay. It's honestly not as hard as I thought because I'm peeing right now and it's getting in my shoes. Ew. Dipping my balls in soy sauce. They're so submerged right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I remember there was a trend. It was like, you have taste buds on your scrotum. <laughs> Don't believe me? When I originally came to you, Michael, I wanted to see if I could, you know, do this TikTok journey and blow up. So I collected 44 new followers on TikTok. 
Like, how close am I to being a client you would sign, like on a scale of one to 10? Like a two. There's no point to sign an, an agreement with 44 followers. I really thought it would be easier, Michael. I, <laughs> when I started this, I really did. I think everyone thinks that, and then it's really quickly they realize people can recognize inauthenticity really quickly. You don't have to be trying to replicate the Breezy Boys formula or Sebastian's formula. Just make content that you enjoy and you won't burn out. You can do it when you want. And Making content you enjoy is kind of bad advice because you're dealing with what the algorithm wants, what you want, and what your audience wants. And a lot of times your audience has preconceived notions about you and what they expect from you. So you have to make content that pleases all three. I'm not surprised Michael rejected me. Rolling up with only 44 followers was embarrassing, especially since I worked with some of the biggest people on the app. We all joke about how easy it is to get famous online but plot twist, it's totally not. Everyone I met seemed to be stuck on the TikTok treadmill, and despite all the trappings of success, it seemed stressful as hell. So yeah, doing this full time just isn't healthy for me. Or most people, I imagine. I don't have the answers. Sometimes I feel as if I'm just another cog in this machine.